On the first breath in, we let go of all of our problems, concerns, schedules, and plans, and surrender into the love of God here present. We breathe out and let go. On our second breath in, we welcome a moment of silence. This sacred silence ushers us into the contemplative dimension of our faith. We breathe out and let go. And on the third breath in, we sink as deeply as we can into our hearts, into the depths of our hearts, where we discover, as always, the sanctuary space that is our sacred meeting place with God. In that place, we call out to the God of love to touch us in precisely the places we need God's compassion the most. The Catholic Community of Sacred Heart welcomes you to this celebration of the Most Holy Eucharist as we begin this new church year on the first Sunday of Advent. We are so grateful that you're here with us today to celebrate the goodness of our God and the wonder of his coming in the Incarnation. So please make yourselves comfortable and get settled so that together we may celebrate the amazing love of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, the great love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
Well, my dear friends, as Gwen has welcomed us to enter into the new church here, it is our joy to celebrate this first Sunday of Advent with you. It is a time of collecting ourselves, a time of coming home. So let's become as present as we can. Let's be honest before our God, trusting in his profound mercy and love. You came to call sinners, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You receive us just as we are, Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You reveal to us your compassion and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and are raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us climb to the Lord's mountain, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise a sword against another, nor shall they ever train for war again. O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us go. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness 
and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in promiscuity or lust, not in rivalry or jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving, giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also with the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of the night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Ah, my dear friends, how I love the season of Advent with its wonderful theme of wake up, stay awake. It's uh, filtered in through all of the readings, this message of vigilance, of staying awake. And do you know, most people spend their whole lives sleepwalking. They're born asleep, they go to school in their sleep, they get married in their sleep, they breed children in their sleep, and they die in their sleep. And isn't it a shame that many people have never awakened to the wonder of this thing we call human life? They're just not here. You know, it's a strange trick of the mind when it has uh, gotten a hold of us. We sometimes have developed such an incredible identity with our minds that we live really in the past all the time. You know exactly what I mean. Someone is a PhD. Someone is their PhD. They never get out of their heads. They're always somewhere in academia. They have built their lives on it, and they miss you, everyone else, and everything around them, or they identify with their role. What if I identified myself in my role as a priest? And I couldn't even see you and would never let you see me for the human person that I actually am. And then if it's not that, think about people that are always living in the future, which doesn't exist. 
The future is either full of some kind of hope that life is going to be better when. Life will be better if. Or, contrarily, people that are terrified of the future, which usually never comes, but (gasps) what is this diagnosis going to mean? What is the doctor going to tell me next? What's going to happen when? What's going to happen if? And they're caught between the mind looking at reality through these lenses of either past or future, but they're never here. They're never present to right now, right here, which not only is the only moment for you and I to live, but it is also the only time we can experience God, Jesus the Christ. We have to hear God now. We have to be present to one another in love now. And think about this, it it doesn't take much to realize that anything that you said or did happened now, or it didn't happen at all. And anything that you imagine will come only comes now. You know, I've heard it said that if we could take every person off the face of the earth and just have animals and plants, we would say to the oak tree, if someone was there to say it, what is the date and the time? And the oak tree would laugh and say, well, it's now. (laughs) It's it's now. That's all there is. It's always now. And, And the eagle perched on the branch would say, silly, it's now. It's always now. So Christ comes with great presence and says, now is the time to wake from sleep. Wake up. Wake up to God who was at this moment staring you in the face. 24-7, God's peace and his depth is available to us constantly. But to access the peace of God, we must become present to what is in the here and now and get out of the lens that will be in the past or the future. Now, I discovered a poem recently that has become one of my favorites. It's called Small Kindnesses by Danusha Lameris. And I would like to share this lovely poem with you as a kind of a frosting on the cake of Christ's lovely message to stay awake, look at now, be present here. Don't miss this beautiful season of Advent. Don't miss this day of the Lord's coming. She writes... I've been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull in their legs to let you pass by. Or how strangers still say, bless you, when someone sneezes, a leftover from the bubonic plague. Don't die, we are saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly, we don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our cup of coffee hot and to say thank you to someone, the person handing it to us, to smile at them and to have them smile back. For the waitress to call us honey when she sets down the bowl of clam chowder. And for the driver in the red pickup truck to let us pass. We have so little of each other now, so far from tribe and fire. 
only these brief moments of exchange. What if they are the true dwelling of the holy, these fleeting temples we make together when we say, here, have my seat. Oh, go ahead, you first. Or, I like your hat. May each day of this Advent season be for you a feast of these little holy temples, these vignettes of the sacred, which we would miss if we did not hear the call of our Lord to wake up and be alert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let's pray our creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's word urges us to prepare for the Lord's coming. In a spirit of hope and reverence, we bring our needs before the Lord. For the church that the season of Advent will bring about in her members renewed hope as we seek to live more fully for God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the leaders of nations will know Christ's coming as they work to end oppression and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we may stay awake, ready, and watching for the coming of our Lord and Master, that his arrival may not be a disruption of our lives, but the goal of all our desires, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in the busyness of this Christmas season, we receive the perfect gift of Christ's peace through moments of prayer and reflection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That as a parish community, we watch and remain alert for those within our communities who are feeling isolated, hurt, or alone during this Advent season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and for all those who have asked our prayers, for the homebound, the military, law enforcement personnel, and first responders. We pray for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time. May the light of Christ lead them to eternal glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, your loving kindness enables us to find your Son wherever he comes to us and in whatever way. In his word, in this meal, and in our brothers and sisters, let our prayers at this Eucharist prepare us to welcome him at the end of time when he will be revealed as the Lord of glory forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. (laughs) 
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together now from our hearts, we pray the beautiful prayer of Jesus, the Christ himself taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will will be done done on earth earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread bread, and and forgive us our our trespasses trespasses, as as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. And and lead us not into into temptation, temptation, but deliver deliver us from from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the the kingdom, kingdom, the the power, power, and and the the glory glory are yours now now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles, I leave you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with with your spirit. We offer to each other now a sign of our love and peace. And if by chance you are in solitude praying with us this day, Join me, won't you, for just a moment of loving silence as we extend the peace from our own hearts throughout all the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but, but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The King shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks when beauty gills the eastern hills and life to joy away not as a Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final blessing, I'd like to give a special shout out to Sue Castagnola and your daughter, Danielle in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Thank you for coming all this way to make a pilgrimage to Sacred Heart in Panagorda, and we were thrilled to have you join our big Sunday Eucharist and get to know our community. We hope that the warmth you found here at Sacred Heart is keeping you warm up there in the snows of winter in Pennsylvania. Thank you for coming. And to all of our online viewers, all of the 12 apostles here of Punta Gorda wish you a most blessed and holy Advent season. You partner with us whenever you hit the like button and when you share the Mass, and we love reading your comments below. Please continue to be family with us. And now, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and be gracious to you. May he reveal to you this day his providence, tenderness, and care for you, and all the days of your lives. May he at this moment touch you with the grace of his peace. The Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our celebration of the Eucharist is now finished. We go forth in peace and in joy 
to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Oh, my. 